I'm going to examine the last statement, the last word, in fact, that left the Lord's mouth before he gave up his spirit. That's important because I was thinking about this, you know, what is the most significant word in human history? Was it a word of wisdom uttered by a philosopher, Aristotle or Socrates? Was it a spoken, or was it spoken by a great poet like Shakespeare in perfect rhyme and rhythm? Was it spoken by a statesman, Churchill or Roosevelt? But I believe it was a word that Jesus spoke out on the cross. His final word. And it's puzzled and and also inspired men for, for centuries and will continue to do it. It's one word, it's translated in most Bibles, it is finished. And that word changed the world. The Greek is, it has been finished. And... Um, it's a brief word of conclusion, a grand finale often used when a huge task has been accomplished. With this word, there need be no great dialogue. It's finished. It says it all. Indeed, the original Greek is a singular word, the delista. The deliste is literally, it has been finished. And we find this in the passage that Valentine read out earlier. This word can also be translated to bring to a close, to bring to an end, or to fully complete, or to accomplish. According to John, and this is the disciple that uh, Jesus loved, after Jesus had received a sponge of sour wine from the soldiers gathered at the foot of the cross, he voiced a command, and it was this one word. I believe it was the voice of triumph. Yeah. People that are triumphant voice certain things. And he said, it has been finished. It has been finished. Now this word is used more than once in this passage. It's used in verse 28 uh, twice, and it says this, and after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, there's the, the teleste, that same word, that the scripture might be fulfilled, teleothi. That's the modern Greek when we say uh, a teleotha, I, I, I finished it it means it's come to an end. So those words are already in this passage because I believe the, the writer wants us, and that's the Holy Spirit, wants us to understand that Jesus knew when he went to the cross that certain things were going to be accomplished, certain things were going to come to an end, that there was a resolve. And uh, we always liken it to a, a, a painter or a sculptor spending years on this masterpiece. And then when he's finished, he steps back and says, it's done, it's finished. But because this word is a little different to simply it is finished. It, it, is, it has been finished. 
Jesus didn't say, I have finished it. He says, it has been finished. He said the, this in the third person singular, it has been finished. And what he had in mind was something of significance. <clears throat> this was stated poignantly in the perfect tense of the Greek language. It denotes a mighty act that had been accomplished and the results of it would abide forever. It was as if the word had been chiseled for all time into some kind of stone in perpetuity and nothing could eradicate or erode its significance. Dedeliste. It has been finished. The Deliste was spoken as a revelation, as a command, and is therefore abs an absolute certainty. Had there been any questions about it, Jesus might have spoken things like, it may be finished or it should be finished. But with a voice of triumph and certainty, he said, it has been finished. Amen. It has been finished. Not only that, but the passive voice indicates that the cross has been used for some greater purpose, with some greater force or power. What happened on the cross was Jesus acting upon the preordained purposes of God by the types, the symbols, the promises, the prophecies of the Old Testament, and now it has been finished. The word that Alistair captures in itself, in one word, the most mighty move of God in history. When Jesus said that Alistair, he was saying, I have brought to an end the far-reaching purposes of God the Father, and they have now been established in heaven and on earth to their correct and full intention. Nothing can eradicate, erode, or reduce the significance of what Jesus had accomplished on the cross. We need to live in that reality. We need to realize that our redemption was secured there. Amen. The atonement for our sins was secured there. Not just for a moment, but for eternity. Jesus said the Son of Man came to give his life as a ransom for many. The Son of Man, the Son of God, lived out his life knowing that this moment was coming and that it would all be bound up, wrapped up, and terminate in his final triumphant cry. It has been finished. Now, I was thinking about that. You know, I don't, I, I don't like going to dentists. Never have done it. But even something as small as that, you know, you book your dentist appointment and then for weeks you're going, you know, when, there's this apprehension because you've got to go to somewhere where you might suffer. <laughs> And you just don't want to do it. But think of Jesus. He had absolute knowledge and clarity on what he was needing to do. And when the Father and him had discussed this, our redemption, <laughs> he said, how do we get them back? Well, someone must pay the price. Jesus must have stood up before the Father and said, I will do it. No one can take my life from me. I will lay it down. Amen. 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 Then throughout his ministry, he knew where he was going. And he said, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Wow. Wow. What has been finished? 
the payment of the ransom price, the atonement, the blood covering, the blood offering, all that Jesus had anticipated, it triumphed on the cross. He died to be the death of death. <laughs> Hallelujah. Never to die again. Death has been finished. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55, it says, O oh death, where is your sting? O oh grave, where is your victory? 1 John 3, verse 8 says, The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. So what was meant by him going to the cross? Well, on the cross, underneath his pierced feet, Jesus was crushing the head of the serpent, and the serpent didn't even know it. From that moment, he struck the blow that will ultimately render inoperative the great enemy of our souls. And in these end times, we are seeing a final desperate display of the powers of darkness. Yet... We cannot forget the victory cry of Jesus. It has been finished. His head has been finally bruised. Amen. He is defeated. He is under the Lord's feet. The Dallas there was spoken, but to whom was it spoken? To whom did Jesus cry it out? I believe he cried it out to his father because they had already arranged this. And you know, Tedelis Day is plural, so it's like almost saying, we have finished it. So I believe that when he cried out, it has been finished, that he, was, he had his father in mind first, because the father and him had preordained, had pre-planned, had decided this is the way to get all of us into the kingdom and anyone that would accept Jesus Christ as Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He volunteered and said, I will lay down my life. No one can take it from me. And on the cross, his voice echoes back from earth to heaven. That word of affirmation. But you know, I believe that it wasn't only heard by God the Father. When he spoke it out, I believe that there was a legions of angels. Seraphim, cherubim, burning spirits, divine agents. I mean, multitudes that were restrained because Jesus said, you know what, well, I can call on them and I can turn the situation around, but he never did. Which tells me they were there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Right. They were there. So they also heard that wonderful word, Dedeleste. It has been finished. They heard it. The thing is, do we hear it? Do we really hear it? Do we really understand it? Do we really embrace it? The importance of that, it was the last word, but it was everything. It was the most important word ever spoken in all of history and would ever be spoken in all of history. It has been finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wonder if that cry of Dedeleste wasn't uttered toward hell itself, where the adversary had to cover his ears. The one who from the gates of Eden had let loose the hounds of hell to try and destroy the works of God. When he heard the Delister, he must have stopped. Because that put an end to everything. 
He was the one who tried to tempt Jesus in the wilderness, the one who tried to slay him in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know what? Because if Jesus died in the Garden of Gethsemane, he would not have shed his blood on the cross. The devil didn't have a clue of the wisdom of God. I'm sure the devil and the forces of darkness also heard the voice of triumph. It has been finished. But they didn't understand it. That's right. But how do we visibly know it's finished? God gave us the sign. The ripped veil cried out. It has been finished. Matthew 27 verse 51 tells us, at the same, very same moment when Jesus said to Delista, a 60 foot long, heavily embroidered curtain hanging on the uh, a wood uh, covered with gold was torn from the top to the bottom. Wow. Visible sign. To tell us that it is finished. And you know why it was torn from the top to the bottom? Because that's when heaven touched earth. Heaven invaded earth that day. <coughs> and we can have a bit of heaven while we're here on earth. Amen. Amen. And that is why we're here today. We're here today to acknowledge that it has been finished. You know, there's nothing more that you can do. Now don't look at me like, oh, well, you know, I know that. Well, if I can remind you of certain things. Certain things that you say and do that don't line up with that. You say, oh well, you know, is God going to help me? Is God going to heal me? Is God going to prosper me? Well, <laughs> if it has been finished, you can't say that. By his stripes I am healed. You have to say that. Because it has been finished. Amen. If your mindset is always in the negative or always waiting for God to do something, that is it. There's no more. Amen. Jesus did it all. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're here to acknowledge that. We're here to boldly declare with him it has been finished. It has been finished. I mean, when someone comes and gives you the whole shooting match or pastor or this and that, you turn around and they, to them, look him in the eye and say, it has been finished. Amen. 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 There's no more. You've got to now, by faith, walk in it. Amen. Talk in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Dance in it. Amen. Shout in it. Cry in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever it is, do it in the positive. Amen. Tell us that it has been finished. Amen. Amen. You can't do any more, so stop trying. The only thing God asks you to do is live by faith. Amen. If you want to please God, that's how you please him. You live by faith. Why? Because you are saying that the cross is enough. Amen. Amen. That's what your faith is saying. If you don't believe it, let me tell you, you will know it very soon. <laughs> because you're not going to get the blessings of God. Because that's not faith. Faith pleases him. And when he's pleased, he blesses you. So let's leave today. It is Good Friday, but it's a good Friday. 
Amen. Amen. Because the last word that Jesus spoke on the cross was the deliste. It has been finished. It was accomplished. It's been done. There's nothing more that Jesus can do. He brought it to a close. He brought everything to the successful end that the Father and him had planned. So today we can walk in it and we can know without shadow of doubt that we are blessed. Amen. Amen. We are blessed. Hallelujah. Turn around to someone and say, I am blessed. Amen. 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 Didn't sound very convincing. I'd like to hear it. <laughs> Turn around to someone and say, I am blessed. And now tell them why. Because it has been finished. Because it has been finished. Nothing more, nothing less. Glory to God. That is why Jesus went to the cross. Yes, he suffered. He didn't go to suffer. He didn't go to experience pain. He didn't go to shed his blood. He went to finish something that him and his father had started. He had to finish it. And he had to do all those things to get to that place. Knowing that he could get to that place. Said he would endure it. Because there was a joy that came after that. The joy came the moment he said, it is finished. It says, and bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. That was it. Oh, I, I, wow. You know, this account is probably the, and I'll end with this, this account is the most accurate account. You can read the other Gospels, but there was only one person standing at the foot of the cross that day. And that's with Mary and Mary Magdalene, and that was John. So Jesus looks down and says, Mother, this is your son. Son, this is your mother. John was standing there. He heard everything. He saw everything. Yeah. We know that. We can't say that for certainty with, you know, Luke or Mark or Matthew. They might have been at a distance or whatever, but the only person, the only disciple who was standing right there at the cross where you could hear everything it was John. He's the only one that has that word there, the Deliste. He heard it. He heard it. He, he understood what it meant. Wow. The greatest word ever spoken in all of history. No, no one could ever say that again. And no one ever needs to, because Jesus did it. Amen. And today, we acknowledge that. And we leave walking in victory. Amen. 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 Then don't forget Sunday, you have to be here. Because this is where we celebrate the reality of what happened. Amen. Amen. The reality is Jesus died and rose again. Christos Anesti. He rose and we're going to celebrate it this Sunday and we are going to enjoy it because we know it is finished. It is done. It is accomplished. It's come to an end. But then, the resurrection power. Hallelujah. Equipping the church. See, if Jesus didn't, uh, wasn't raised from the dead, we would never be equipped with power. We need resurrection power. Well, resurrection power was used on resurrection day. Sunday, come and get empowered on Sunday. But today, remember that it was all accomplished, all done, all finished on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah.